here's how to make the cutlass of this landscape shot pop using just a bit of Photoshop. If you want to follow along as always there's a link to the raw file in the description of this video and now let's jump right into it. The good thing is most of the editing will be done in the camera raw editor which in turn means everything I'm doing here can be done in Lightroom as well if you prefer that software. So the raw file is rather dark and colorless. We want to change that. First I'm changing the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape which will immediately introduce a lot more saturation to this image. Now let's open up the basic panel. I do want to work on the exposure for a moment because as you can see looking at the screen it's rather dark with just a little bit of an exposure going on. So the first thing I want to do is to just bring up the exposure making everything brighter. Looking much better this way but of course the highlights start to get a little bit too bright. There's an easy fix for that just bring down the highlights. Here you don't want to bring them down too much otherwise it might look a bit strange but we can safely drop it to around this point. It's important to keep that lightning strike as natural as possible so that's a good spot right there. We can also play around with whites maybe we want to bring them up slightly which helps to introduce some more contrast to this image. And finally there is still a little bit of unexposure going on so what I want to do to fix that is to just raise the blacks. While raising the blacks you can hold down the alt key to see where the unexposure is happening and as you can see it's right there in the bottom part of the foreground so it's not that important of an area meaning a bit of unexposure is totally fine here. For an image like this it's important to keep it very clean and sharp. What I mean by that is usually I'm adding some negative clarity and dehaze to get the image a soft look. This time however let's do the opposite. I want to introduce some texture for the smallest details. Then I'm also going to increase the clarity very very slightly and I'm not touching the dehaze. So this way we get a super clean image. And for the next step let's bring up the vibrance because we want to make the colors pop. I'm going to raise them quite a bit and we can also introduce just a bit of saturation here. Perfect. Now we already have transformed the image quite a bit. Let's compare to before. You can see here it's a rather dark unexposed shot which compared to the after image looks almost like a black and white image. That transformation is great but we can push things a little further with a bit of masking. So let's open up the masking panel. What I want to do here is mostly focus on the sky because that's where the most important things are happening with those lovely clouds. So first off let's add a linear gradient covering most of the sky like this. I think I actually want to subtract an object here. So let's say select subject and I'm going to paint over this tree. That was not helpful at all so let's not do that. Instead let's go subtract color range and I'm just clicking in here and that actually fixes the problem. I can make use of the refine slider just like that. But this mask should be fine. Now what I want to do here is to just add a little more clarity which will bring out the details in the clouds. All right that looks great. Then I'm going to add another linear gradient and I want to target the top right portion of the sky like this. So basically all the dark parts of the sky without affecting the highlights. And here I'm simply going to drop the exposure since I want to make that area a lot darker. Keep in mind bringing down the exposure will make the sky in this area more saturated as you can see. So we might need to fix the saturation at a certain point. I do think I want to add another linear gradient right away. I'm going to make it smaller but I'm going to target the same area as before. And again I'm just bringing down the exposure making this area darker. Perfect. I do think I want to add one more linear gradient for that area. And again just bring down the exposure. And the reason for me to use multiple linear gradients is just to have different size variations going on here and in turn just make it look more natural. Okay but enough with the darkening of the sky. I also want to add a radial gradient covering this storm cell right here in the center where the lightning bolt is coming out. And again I want to increase the clarity 
to make that cloud structure more impressive. Wonderful, that looks great. And that's it for the masking. I can turn off the masks for a moment so you can see the difference from before to after. As you can see with those masks, we basically made the sky a little more dramatic compared to before. Okay, then let's further work on the colors. I want to start doing that in the color mixer. And here we just need to target the saturation. As I said in the intro, I want to make the colors pop, meaning making them a lot more intense. In this case, what I want to do is to target the warmer color tones. That means I'm going to bring up the red saturation. I'm going to raise it quite a bit and to prevent any strange color bending from happening, I'm also going to raise the magenta saturation just to be safe. That also means I'm going to slightly raise the purple tones. And of course, we want to raise orange, which will make the sunset colors more intense. Perfect. Now, on the other hand, I want to kind of reduce other color tones of this image, mainly the green ones. So let's bring them down quite a bit, making the foreground look a little bit less distracting. Also, I want to reduce the aqua tones and the blue tones since the sky on the right side is way too saturated at the moment. All right, at this point we are at a good spot. Let me deactivate the color mixer for a moment. So we went from this to this. We can further tweak the colors with a bit of split toning. So let's start with the highlights. And as usual with those sunset shots, I'm going to aim for a warm color tone. So let's bring up the hue first. Trying to go somewhere the orange color range. And then I want to raise the saturation. Let's see how high we can go in here. I think this looks pretty good. All right. Then I'm also going into the midtones, but instead of a warm color tone, I do want to keep the color contrast and go with a cold color tone like this and slightly bring up the saturation here. Actually, let's pump it up a little more. I think this looks better. Perfect. So we have a bit of sunset colors with quite a bit of blue going on here. For the final part of the color grading, let's go into the calibration tab. And here I just want to slightly push the saturation some more. I think this is looking great. Now we're almost done with the raw adjustments. Just one more thing I want to do, and that's the sharpening in the details tab. As always, I'm using the same settings, bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking while holding down the Alt key. And I'm targeting the lightning strike in the distance like this. And now I'm just bringing up the sharpening. And that's the image after a few raw adjustments. Now we want to finish this shot in Photoshop, so let's open up this object. So what I want to do first is to apply some more contrast. I'm going to head into the adjustment layers and choose levels. And I'm going to bring the point for the highlights a little further to the left, making the whole image a little brighter. All right. Of course, we are also affecting the brightest areas of the image, which we actually don't want. So make use of the layer mask, push B to pick up the brush tool and make sure the foreground color is set to black. And now I'm just brushing over the brightest parts to get rid of this overexposure here. Okay, that looks way better. Again, I want to use another levels adjustment layer and I only want to target the sky. So I want to use the layer mask one more time, choose the gradient tool and I have set it up going from black to transparent. And by dragging it up like this, I'm basically masking out the foreground from this levels adjustment layer. Now, when clicking on the adjustment layer itself, you can see the histogram and you can see we do have quite some room in the darker tones. This means I can bring up this point for the blacks further to the right side. And this way we are adding contrast. We can safely push it some more without risking underexposure. And it's also not affecting the foreground at all since we have masked it out. So that's looking great. 
Finally, I do think I want to crop this image some more, getting more attention on the lightning strike. So let's hit C and I'm going to cut off a bit of the left. And let's also cut off a bit of the right and the bottom, keeping the image nicely framed like this. All right, let's hit OK. We could do a little more color grading using the Nick Collection plugin. So let's do that. I'm going to merge every layer into a single new layer by hitting Control Shift Alt E. Now let's go to Filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. And what I want to use here is the Brilliance Warmth effect just to add some more warmth. So let's push that slider here. Not going to push it too much, but I also want to bring up the saturation notch. All right, I think this is looking quite good so far. Let's see, maybe I'm going to add another filter. I want to try the polarization effect, bringing up the saturation as well, but this is way too much. Let's try a pro contrast. Going to add a bit of correct color cast, which in turn will just introduce some warmer tones. I think this looks great. And I also want to add a bit of dynamic contrast. And I guess that's it. So let's hit OK. And just like that, we have brought back a lot more color to this raw file. I hope this tutorial was easy to follow. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. I will gladly answer them. And thank you so much for watching this video.